In the vast and treacherous North Sea, the crew of the Kinloch Bravo oil rig had been toiling away for months, with the promise of finally going home within reach. However, their hopes were quickly dashed when Magnus, the rig manager, received a phone call from the company bearing bad news. The helicopters that were supposed to take them home were now being diverted to another oil platform, North Kilskauer, which had experienced a power failure. With no clear timeline for when the helicopters would be able to pick them up, Magnus tried to get more details from the company, only to find that the phone suddenly stopped working. As communications started to fail throughout the rig, tensions began to rise. Lars, one of the crew members, demanded proper explanations for why they couldn't go home yet, while the power outage and generator failures threatened their safety. Fulmer, the communication specialist, tried to get in touch with the standby vessel, but the radio was still not working. Things took a turn for the worse when the rig began to shake and the production module caught on fire. Magnus ordered his men to shut down the module, even though it would mean falling short of the quota, for the sake of their lives. However, the rig continued to shake, and a thick fog enveloped the entire building. As they struggled to restore communications and deal with the mysterious events unfolding around them, tensions between the crew members started to boil over. Accusations were thrown, secrets were revealed, and a sense of desperation began to set in. When Baz, one of the crew members, fell from the top of the radio tower, suspicions ran high. Lars accused Magnus of being responsible for the accident and snooped around his desk, only to find a memo from the company that revealed a shocking truth. The company was junking the entire field, and everyone was going to lose their jobs soon. As ash began to fall from the sky, and Baz started having strange visions, it became clear that something much larger and more ominous was at play. With time running out, the crew of the Kinloch Bravo oil rig had to band together and fight for their survival. They would need to unravel the mystery behind the strange events and work together to find a way out of the North Sea alive. As he ascended the tower, the fog thickened around him, shrouding everything in an eerie mist. Suddenly, he saw something moving in the distance, barely discernible through the haze. His heart raced as he tried to make out the shape. Then, as quickly as it had appeared, it was gone. But the sound in his head persisted, a low hum that seemed to vibrate in his bones. Meanwhile, Kat carefully approached Baz with a syringe in hand, hoping to collect a blood sample. But as soon as the needle pierced his skin, Baz erupted into a violent rage, shouting at them for not listening to his warnings. He knew that a massive wave was coming, but no one seemed to believe him. Despite their best efforts, it took several attempts to sedate him. As Kat and Rose examined his wounds, they were shocked to discover that they were healing rapidly, almost magically. And when they left him alone, Baz saw something even more bizarre, glowing spores seemed to be working on closing his injuries. Down in the rec room, the crew was startled by lights flashing outside the window. It was the standby vessel, but it was heading in the wrong direction and trying to communicate in Morse code. Alwyn was sent out to intercept the message, and it turned out that they were in distress and needed help. Magnus quickly ordered Fulmer to signal back to the vessel using deck lights, while he himself went to speak with the cook about rationing their food supplies. But tensions were high, and Lars was starting to lose his grip on reality, trapped in his room with only Easter to guard him. Meanwhile, Baz woke up again in the infirmary, amazed to see that most of his injuries had healed. But as he checked his reflection, he had a terrifying vision of the rig being destroyed. Fearing for his life, he escaped to his room and felt something wriggling inside his mouth. To his horror, his gold tooth popped out, as if expelled by some unseen force. Rose, sensing that something was terribly wrong, gathered Ash to analyze it and ordered everyone to stay inside. Fulmer informed her and Magnus that they had no way of communicating with the standby vessel and that they needed to guide it in using deck lights. But the risk was high, and if they evacuated, they could face legal consequences. As the night wore on, things only got worse. Alwyn found Baz drawing strange circles on the window, and when he asked him what was wrong, Baz could only say that his head was full of noise. The lights flickered, and Baz had another terrifying vision before running off. Meanwhile, Lars managed to break free from his room and escape through the window. And Lek, unable to cope with the stress, resorted to drinking rubbing alcohol and taking a shower. But as he vomited blood, the ink from his tattoos began to peel away, leaving him in agony. By the time Heather found him, it was too late. Lek was dead, 
and the crew was left to face the terrifying unknown alone. As the team on the oil rig struggled to survive, they were faced with a series of bizarre and terrifying events. When Kat went to check on a crew member, she found him dead with no clear cause of death. But when Dunlin arrived with Baz's tooth, they realized something strange was happening to their bodies, causing inorganic material to be pushed out. Meanwhile, in the control room, Fulmer noticed a strange light on the bridge that didn't come from the rig. He and Alwyn went to investigate, but Lars, a crew member, saw them and turned off his flashlight before they could catch him. Lars then snuck back inside and locked the door, bumping into Heather on the way. As Fulmer and Alwyn searched for another way in, they accidentally wounded Fulmer's hand. But at that moment, the ash that had been falling mysteriously stopped. Lars then went to the control room and signaled an SOS with the lights, causing the vessel to come at full speed. Alwyn eventually found Baz, but Baz refused to leave, wanting to see the life in the water that started it all. As the crew tried to make sense of the strange events, they discovered that the ash contained living organisms that were looking for hosts. These organisms repaired wounds quickly to keep the host healthy, and they had to avoid long exposure to the ash and keep an eye on people with open wounds. Rose, a crew member, also discovered that the spores had been seen before fossilized in layers of earth and should have died with the dinosaurs. Drilling so deep had awoken a sleeping nest of spores. Baz had taken his own blood sample and touched the tanks of water, instantly filling them with spores. He was now fully healed and growing plants in the mud pit. When James, another crew member, joined him, they believed they needed to defend this place because it was being attacked. The rest of the crew realized Heather was missing and went to rescue her. As they tried to restore power to the rig, the crew faced one terrifying event after another. James lost a tooth, revealing that he was infected, and the rig started shaking. Eventually, the crew managed to restore power, but they realized the flare on the production module was gone. With the rig still in danger, the crew had to work together to survive and figure out how to stop the spores from spreading. It was a long and terrifying journey, but in the end, they were able to overcome the threat and save the rig. The crew of the oil rig had been working for months without incident, but everything changed when a series of earthquakes hit the area. The tremors caused damage to the rig systems, leading to a dangerous buildup of pressure that threatened to cause an explosion. The crew quickly realized that they needed to disconnect the rig from the electricity system to prevent a catastrophe. However, the module control that would allow them to do so was located in the mud pit, where spores that could infect the crew were present. Their only option was to reignite the flare manually, a risky move that Fulmer volunteered for. With Easter controlling the crane to bring him closer, Fulmer unclipped his harness and moved as close as possible to get a proper shot. Despite getting hit by the fire, he successfully reignited the flare. Meanwhile, Baz's visions grew worse, and he became convinced that the rig system needed to be shut down to stop an impending attack. James attempted to close the valve, but the pipes were still under pressure, leaving them no choice but to access the system from the source. After Fulmer was taken to the infirmary for serious burns, he was visited by Rose, who he insisted he felt fine and wanted to help. Together with Heather, they worked on researching the cause of the earthquakes and the strange circles that appeared on the land. Magnus discovered that Baz was attempting to bypass the safeties for the well, leading to a high-pressure situation that could only be resolved with the help of the bullseye ROV. Easter guided the ROV and discovered that the earthquakes had created a series of circles on the land, similar to Fulmer's drawings. As communication was restored, the crew uncovered a secret project called Syrian and Mysterious Containers that no one knew about. Fulmer also began hearing Baz's voice in his head and had a vision of Rose suffering. Hours later, Fulmer left a note and ran to the mud pit. Rose and Kat went after him and found the crew getting excited as a ship approached the rig. Coke, who worked for the company's research division, demanded to be taken to the control room. In the infirmary, Harish told Easter a different story, revealing that Coke had been sent to the rig to cover up the dangerous experiments the company had been conducting. With the rig systems failing and the crew in danger, it became clear that the situation was far more complex and dangerous than anyone had imagined. Coke arrived at the offshore drilling rig, and it was clear he had an important task to accomplish. He sent most of the crew home, keeping only those who were essential to help him install some new equipment. The task was critical, 
and they had to succeed. They weren't drilling oil up from the well, instead, they were sending something down. Coke was the only one who knew what it was, but he looked calm as if he had done this before. However, as the night went on, a thick fog descended on the rig, and strange things began to happen. People started disappearing one by one. Coke remained calm and focused on his work, testing the equipment and ignoring the pressure warnings until the rig exploded. Heather, one of the survivors, was tasked with cross-checking the list of survivors with the crew files, but to her surprise, she couldn't find Coke's name. She told Easter and Harish about this, and it was revealed that Coke had been accessing the system with a temporary account made by the IT guy upon his arrival. Coke wiped everything related to the test from the system before leaving the rig. When Heather checked the system, Harish pointed to a strange name on the crew list that wasn't there before. They found emails revealing that the organism they had been working on had already spread, indicating that Coke had always known, and the company had sent him to the rig on purpose. Meanwhile, Kat checked on Rose, who was studying some strange circles, which she realized looked like a tree. She realized that this might be how the spores kept track of time. The gap between the rings marked the five major mass extinction events, and the last ring represented the present, which was closing up quickly to destroy them. Coke explained that the explosion on the rig had been caused by the infected people who had opened the well to blow it up. He wanted to send a team to the production module, but Magnus refused to take that risk. Rose guessed that all the containers and testing were part of a secret project called Syrian. Fulmer, who had just arrived, noticed that his mind was clearer than his friends. Baz explained that Fulmer hadn't been exposed to the spores long enough yet, but they would take over soon. If Fulmer accepted to deal with the system, Baz could help him harness them. Dunlin, Lars, and Merch were sick of Magnus' bad decisions and called Coke for a private meeting to hear his ideas. Coke explained that they could stop Baz by using the carbon dioxide from the secret containers to knock him down. They obtained the canisters from the containers, and Dunlin became suspicious because the label said that the carbon dioxide was mixed with something else. They took the canisters to the mud pit and connected them to the ventilation shafts, protecting themselves with masks. Baz sent James and Fulmer to check what was going on, but James suddenly threw up blood on them. The guys realized the carbon dioxide wasn't knocking James out, but was killing him and the plants because that was Coke's plan all along. Lars and Merch ran away, but Dunlin didn't join them until he was sure James couldn't be saved. Fulmer tried to shut off the ventilation, but both he and Baz passed out. In the control room, Kat found Coke shutting down the doors around the mud pit after Lars and Merch had escaped, trapping Dunlin inside. Dunlin's mask ran out of oxygen, and he died too. Heather and Harish told Rose and Magnus about Coke and went to confront him. However, Coke defended his actions as necessary for survival. Magnus opened the doors but couldn't get access to the ventilation they find Baz writhing on the ground, his body convulsing as if he's being electrocuted. Fulmer rushes to his side and tries to make contact with the spores to calm them down, but they seem to be in a frenzy. Rose looks around and notices that the walls of the mud pit are covered in what looks like ancient carvings. She takes a closer look and realizes that they are actually markings made by the spores themselves. She starts to decipher them and realizes that they are a sort of language, one that is meant to communicate with the spores. As she continues to study the markings, Rose realizes that the spores are not trying to destroy the world out of malice, but out of fear. They sense a great danger coming, one that threatens all life on Earth. Rose begins to communicate with the spores, explaining that they are not alone, that they have allies on the surface who want to help them. At first, the spores are skeptical, but Rose and Fulmer continue to communicate with them, explaining that they can work together to stop the impending catastrophe. Finally, the spores start to calm down, and Baz begins to regain consciousness. Magnus, who has been watching from the sidelines, is amazed by what he has witnessed. He realizes that Rose and Fulmer have found a way to communicate with the spores, and he begins to see them in a new light. Together, Magnus, Rose, and Fulmer come up with a plan to stop the catastrophe that the spores have been sensing. They used the data that Coke had collected to identify the source of the danger, a massive underwater volcano that is about to erupt. They realize that if the volcano erupts, it will trigger a chain reaction that will wipe out all life on Earth. Magnus contacts the authorities and explains the situation to them. 
He convinces them to work with him and his team to stop the eruption. They come up with a plan to use explosives to trigger a controlled eruption, one that will release the pressure in the volcano without causing it to erupt catastrophically. It's a risky plan, but it's their only hope. Magnus and his team work around the clock, drilling into the volcano and setting the explosives. Finally, the moment arrives. They detonate the explosives, and a massive blast rocks the ocean floor. At first, it looks like the plan has failed, but then something miraculous happens. The spores begin to glow, emitting a bright light that illuminates the entire ocean floor. The volcano erupts, but instead of causing a catastrophe, it triggers a massive release of energy that ripples through the ocean, calming the spores and preventing the catastrophe that they had sensed. As the team watches in awe, Magnus turns to Rose and Fulmer and thanks them for their incredible work. He realizes that they have saved the world, not by fighting the spores, but by communicating with them and working together. In the end, the team returns to the surface, where they are hailed as heroes. Magnus, Rose, and Fulmer are awarded medals for their bravery and ingenuity, and the world is forever changed by their discovery. The spores, once feared as a threat to humanity, are now seen as valuable allies, a part of the delicate balance of life on Earth. And Magnus, who once saw only the profits that could be made from drilling for oil, now understands that there are things far more important than money.